And now for something completely different, a child's rocking chair, but only a partial restoration, I'm afraid. It's a friend of ours, and it's uh, one of his neighbors, and she had this child's rocking chair, and it was in pretty rough condition, clearly put together by somebody who had a, a talent with working raw wood. <laughs> but you can see how dirty it was there. And the idea is to get it clean and to wet the joints and pull out the nails that are staining the wood. And to my wife's nervousness, pull the thing apart, pull it down to its components so that you can really work on it. And with a little bit of work, it, it all came apart pretty nicely. Nothing broke. But of course, I came across some places that were in really bad shape. And I'll be going through those and fixing them up in this video. Well, there it is. There's your, there's your chair. And it needed all kinds of work. So uh, bad rotted pieces are drilled out and I'm putting here wood putty on there. I got a little bit the wrong color. So I had to come back and camouflage that. But there's lots of cracks and things. And I can put some wood glue in there and put some new wood, clamp it down. It'll be really strong and ready for. I don't know, the next hundred years. Here's Here I am sanding. This is the start of me sanding this chair, probably five or, well, I don't want to exaggerate, I'll bet I did it five times. And part of it's just sanding down some of the work he did, but I also went over the entire chair. So he gives you nice, strong hands. And, you know, part of the sanding is getting these, the ends of the spindles, getting the glue off of it. And here I am cutting a dowel to plug a hole. Probably the hole from where the, the nails were. Yeah, I just had to drill them out to make them look a little bit nicer. Here I'm putting oxalic acid on all the wood. And that take 10 takes out stains that you know, there are some stains that come out with oxalic acid. And here I am again with about 80 grit sandpaper sanding this, this stuff down. And as you can see, the spindles, some of them were like this one here. It, you know, it's 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 cut like you just would, you know, cut a piece of a chair off from a from a piece of wood, but other ones are look like actual like branches that have just been rounded off on the ends and those kind of look nice in a way it makes it look rustic but boy they are hard to clean and hard to sand down without you know sanding down every every bit of it to where it's just a round spindle you don't want that because it takes away from the the character of the chair And so there you're just going to be doing tons and tons of hand sanding. And that's what I did. I started with about 80 grit and I went to probably 100 on some parts of it and then down to 220. That box that just appeared there, that's the big failure I had on this chair of trying to put on a, a backing and a seat using some reed but we'll get to that in a minute. But for the moment, it's just one piece after another, sand it, sand it. A lot of it's just embedded dirt. And here, I'm gonna start putting it together. But this is just 
sort of dry putting it together. So, you know, I'm, I'm not gluing anything. I'm not screwing anything down. Um, no nails, no screws anyway, but just putting it together. Does it fit? Does everything fit nicely? Do I, do I know how to put it, put it back properly? You can see my laptop there. <laughs> I do have something to work from. I did take those videos earlier. And so I want to get it together. I want to measure it, make sure this, the, the right spindles are in the right place, that the holes are correct, that it's more or less square. And here you can see it come together. And this is this is just the chair all sanded and some of, some of the bits and pieces repaired. There I was with that oxacillic acid again, trying to put it on some of the places that I thought were just stains. And here I am measuring it, making sure that it's, that it's square, and it was. Once I started sanding down past, you know, 100 or 80 or 100, and I got it about 220, you really started to see some of the beauty of this wood. I'm not even exactly sure what it was, but gosh, it had some really nice grain. And the, the piece at the very top in the back, you'll see it later. Um, you know, some, some of it's a little bit worm-eaten. So the, the worms have gotten to this. Of course, of course, now I got to take it apart after I say, oh, it's it's all right. It goes back, it goes, it goes uh, together well, then I've got to take it apart and, and, and of course, put it, uh, put it together in a, in a more permanent fashion. But uh, I, I sanded the top part down to about 320 and it just almost shined. Uh, but, you know, this, 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 some, some of it was eaten away by bugs and that's really too bad. But beautiful, beautiful wood. And here I am sort of camouflaging bits and pieces and, and you know, uh, where, where you where you fix it sometimes you need to, I think I'm actually putting on uh, some, uh, using some turpentine here just to really clean it up well. Here I'm making sure the ends are, are good and, and that they're going to fit snugly. They, they weren't fitting very snugly and so I'm putting here I'm putting a little bit of veneer around the ends and it makes them just a, a little bit bigger and makes them go in there nice and snugly. And that'll form a great bond in there. So it's been cleaned. The ends have been snugged up and I'm putting it back together here. And here come the clamps. And anybody who's worked with wood knows you cannot have enough clamps. And those clamps will really, you know, it'll it'll pull it together and it'll make it super strong. That uh, that glue is as strong as, if not stronger, than the the wood around it. So we're all clamped down. We also measured, making sure the thing is square. And there she is. She's looking good. And I've got to go around and fix little bits and pieces where I've, you know, maybe have put wood and filled in places. And uh, you can see there on the arm, I'm just taking a pen and I'm just trying to reproduce the the grain and the Im imperfections of the wood on that on that wood filler, and then color it in and just just camouflage all these things. Um, I'm going to go around the chair here just in a minute, um, trying to show you where I, what things I've camouflaged. And well, frankly, if you don't see what I'm trying to show you, then it worked. Well, there she is. It's all glued together, and now I'm putting some 
Danish oil on it. This is the first coat. And get a coat on there and then come back and and rub it down. And I take all the to take the excess off. Let it sit there for a couple minutes, let it get worked in, and then rub it, rub it off. And in the end, did this about three times. Also coming back, a little bit more sanding, just very light sanding over it after it had dried. Now here's where I went wrong. This reed, look at this, a whole big, just a ton of it there. And I thought, I can do this. I watched the YouTube videos. How hard can it be? So I called here a consultant in, and she was helping me. And she's better at these things than I am anyway. It's kind of a puzzle, and she's a, a real puzzle person, very rational thinker. And so she came up with some good ideas, and I just, I just couldn't do it. It it, uh, it it looked really bad. So here I am, and I'm going to try to put the seat on, and I'm going to go back and forth a few times. And, Gosh, there's just there's just no way I can can do this, and I didn't even video everything I did. I did this about three different times, and here I am back on the internet trying to trying to find some some wisdom, and I just just can't. I'm coming to the realization that this is just not my sport. But I'm still going at it and still going at it. And you'll see that I come back here in just a second with a box cutter and I take everything off. But I did give it the good old college try. I really, really tried. And uh, I have found out that, like they say about yodeling, it's an art. I think I could probably yodel better than I can do this. So I'm done. I can't do it very well. I don't want to do it. I'm I'm a wood guy. Here comes the box cutter. I'm done with this. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do with this big box of reed. But um, there it is. Okay. Well, I'm just going to do the wood stuff. And here's some here's some pictures of the of the grain that came out. It's just really pretty, but you see that it's not the normal spindles there. They're not just perfectly round. They're almost like a a limb that was just rounded on each end, so it would stick into the into the holes there of the chair. Look at that, very nice. That's that, that's that top part there. I sanded that down with three twenty, which is a pretty fine grit. And uh, it's just beautiful. Here's some of the imperfection stuff that I was talking about, kind of going in there and showing you, hopefully, that you can't see. Here's where I'm going in and where, where the these spindles, they fit in there, but they, they didn't fill it. And, and that's not quite as strong. So I was making um, sort of tailor-made little bits of wood that I could slide in there and fill up those holes and make it that much stronger. And when you eyeball it, it looks about this big and usually it's about half that size. So I spent a lot of time sanding it down and making it smaller. And here I am taking this very tiny hammer and hammering them in and then taking a chisel and taking off the excess and, um, but but it's worth it. It's worth it because the, the chair is that much stronger and that much sturdier. And here I'm also, you can see me with a paintbrush there. I'm camouflaging it because I didn't always have, you know, the, the exact match of wood. So I wanted to to camouflage that as well.
got my Japanese saw there. Maybe you can see that. This is the, one of the handiest things I've ever bought. Beautiful thing. And here I am trying to just fill in some stuff. And there she is. I, I, she's had three coats of Danish oil. Now I'm putting beeswax. So this thing is fully protected. It's put back together. It's really sturdy. It's made of lovely wood. And it was a real pleasure to work on, except for trying to do the reed part. <laughs> That's... Yeah, there it is. Slow down the video here so you can see it a little bit. Got beeswax all over it. Gives it a nice soft feel. And we'll protect it. And there she is. So. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll have more restorations coming soon.